Hey friends, it's Marianne. Today we're back in the home studio where we'll be trying the Paul Rubens artist Soft Pastels and learning what it really means to overcome your fear of trying new things. We're making two pieces today, so grab an art supply you haven't used in a while and let's draw together. The last time I used soft pastels, I made a huge mess and had no clue about color theory. Therefore, to say that it turned out horribly would not be an understatement. So when I was offered these by Paul Rubens, I really wanted to improve my past experience using soft pastels. For this illustration, I'll be using my sketch pad that I'm pretty sure is 7 years old. I liked the box these came in with the gold lettering, but was curious to know why there were 40 pastels, which I think is quite a bit. When I opened it up, I noticed that it consisted of mostly hues and primary colors and a couple shades. Just to be sure, I started preparing my swatch page to use as color references while I draw. With the leftover paper, I'm rolling these into blending stumps. I try my best not to waste any material and be resourceful when possible. You can do this or blend with your fingers as well as long as they're clean. The swatches were smooth, came out very bright, and it only took a couple swipes on paper. Needless to say, things are going way better than they did years before. So I went ahead and took some reference photos to use in my self-portrait. Here I am with my iPad and fruit stickers looking like an iPad baby. Let me tell you a bit about why soft pastels were a big no for me a couple years ago. I didn't like how powdery they can get. There'd be tons of dust sitting on my page after a couple of strokes, and I wasn't used to having a medium that was this blendable. The same can be said about watercolors. They can get out of hand quick if there's too much water, and with soft pastels, if you press too hard, you might break it or leave a mark too strong to erase. It has a very strong presence on page, and honestly, I think it was too powerful and intimidating for me to use at the time. So I just said, I'm not used to them, when really, my issue was that I was afraid of using them wrong and getting called out saying that I wasn't doing it right and falling into a spiral about why I suck at art and this and that and everything. But no. Perfectionism is such a pain and I don't know why I was so hard on myself when all I needed was patience and the time to learn to get it right. Things can still get crazy sometimes, but I've learned that instead of being down on yourself, you have to give yourself room to improve. It's a tough pill to swallow, but you're probably the only one that believes you suck at something, when in reality, you could be doing just fine. And look, the eyes in the self-portrait went from looking horrendous to soft and beautiful? I didn't know I had it in me, but apparently I do. If there's anything you're afraid of trying, ask yourself this. Are you afraid of the thing itself? Or are you afraid of the outcome? There can potentially be something really great waiting for you to experience on the other end. In my case, I had to accept what needed to change so I could improve. 
Learning to let go of the expectation of the outcome would really help you focus on what you're trying to achieve. I just wanted to get better at using soft pastels, and sure, I thought about my old mess ups, but the next time I tried it after the self portrait, I made sure to correct my actions. There's definitely something with the face. Yeah, I don't think I made it as wide. Usually whenever I draw a face, I just end up filling up the entire space with the facial features. So that is definitely something I have to do. I do have a bit more space around the perimeter, but here I just filled the entire thing up. But that's all right. She's still cute. The cleanup after drawing is always very therapeutic for me. It's like giving my brain a bath. Too bad I couldn't bathe my desk because it looked like it really needed it. I blew the soft pastel dust everywhere instead of piling it up like I was supposed to, but that's fine because I guess we're learning. I've also officially turned these into my art pants. It was really late by the time I finished my portrait. I'm very happy with the colors and the details, so we'll take another look at her in the morning. I used to be deathly afraid of drawing hands. I think I'll show you my old drawings just as a reference, but I just really like how the colors come together. That's the one thing I really like about chalk. You can just scribble on a bunch of the colors and just smudge it, and it turns out looking fine. Most of the time, it does. But I have to go and spray this down to seal it now. The self-portrait ended up being the piece I used to test out the colors, so I decided to make another one since I'm a bit more comfortable with the soft pastels now. I wanted something that would challenge my color mixing capabilities, and I landed on this photo that I took when passing by a flower shop with my cousin earlier this year. Pieces feel very special to me when the references are ones I've taken myself. That, and I really love flowers. My good friend Paul came out again today, and to be honest, they were looking kind of wrecked, but that didn't affect the color quality at all, which I was impressed by. And instead of blowing all the chalk dust away while I worked, I summoned all of my self-control to leave everything as it was on the page. No swiping it away until the very end, which was a bit hard because the little piles bothered me a bit until I realized I could use the extra pigment to help with blending. Here, I worked from a mid-tone to light to dark, but you can also do dark to light if that's easier. I learned an important trick. Blocking out colors before blending helped a lot, because these soft pastels were surprisingly easy to layer, even over darker colors. Sometimes, you have to give yourself the same patience as you would give a child that's new to the world. For the most part, they're still learning, and so are you. It helps to take a step back and take care of yourself the same way that you would take care of a friend. It isn't effective to guide by force, but it works a lot better if you guide yourself with patience.
I didn't need thin lines, so blending with my fingers were just fine. They're non-toxic, so it's okay to get all over your hands, as long as you wash them. While the piece progressed, I could seriously feel my heart coming out my eyes. I was obsessed. It was one of the most beautiful things I've created so far, and I decided, yeah, I'm gonna do this again. Believe in myself, that is, cause who else is supposed to? Not to sound like I'm hyping myself up, but I'm hyping myself up. You see what I just made for my brain? Very cool. Very nice. I like it. And this is how you're supposed to clean up soft pastels. about an hour and a half on this. It's 6.12 right now. So I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my night now. I'm gonna have some tea and have a snack. So good night. See ya. Thank you to Paul Rubens for sending the soft pastels to try out. You can use Myriad 15 for 15% off at the link in the description if you'd like to give these a try. I hope you learned something or felt inspired by this video to try new things. Thanks for being here with me. I'll see you soon.